Welcome back. My friends at theprepperproject.com recently asked me if I could write an article on the top seven mistakes you make when harvesting rainwater. I thought, well, that's a good one. I've probably made every mistake in harvesting rainwater and we are in the middle of monsoon season right now here in the tropics and it has been raining and raining and raining. But in just a few months, it's going to be dry. Water is the number one thing that you need for your homestead and for your gardens. It's great to have a stockpile of gold and guns and seeds and MREs and old baseball tickets and socks and bubble gum and margarine containers and broken pans. But if you don't have water, you're going to be in trouble. So let's look at the top seven mistakes when you're harvesting rainwater. Number one, make it expensive. That mosquito did not come from my water harvesting system. A lot of people look at what it takes to harvest rainwater and they look at big complicated systems. They see that they need a cistern and they need filtration and maybe pipes underground and they need a pump and they need all this crazy stuff and they look at it and say, you know, that's too expensive. I'm not going to deal with that. Well, I don't have that kind of money anyways, but I did want water and most of my water is going to irrigating gardens. So what I did was I got myself some old hot tubs and I set them up in the backyard, three of them and a couple of rain barrels. And then I had probably something like 1,200 gallons of water caught and I never ran out of water. Even when we had a month long drought, there was enough water there that I could take care of the gardens and keep them going. It doesn't have to be too expensive. It's better to harvest some and do it on the cheap than it is to harvest none. Mistake number two, let the mosquitoes in. Mosquitoes are a serious problem. Even an old tire can breed mosquitoes. So if you have a big barrel open of water, it looks like a mosquito breeding haven. You don't want that. You don't want big problems with mosquitoes, especially with all of the mosquito-borne viruses that are wandering around right now. And it's irritating at barbecues. With my hot tub pond systems, I put in what are called mosquito fish. That's a little native Florida fish that eats mosquito larvae. I also put in goldfish, which are supposed to eat mosquito larvae. And that kept them down. Didn't really have much of a problem with mosquitoes. But in the barrels where I didn't have as much space, they were a problem unless I covered them with some screening this is the tropics. We have lots of mosquitoes here. And it's not from my rainwater harvesting. If you don't cover them up, you're gonna have problems with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes like to breed in open water. If you cover them up, they die. You can also pour a little slick of oil on top, but that tends to junk up over time and coagulate into sticky, messy stuff. And it's better to just keep it covered with screening real well or put lids on all of your catchment. One other thing. There are these mosquito dunks that I've used. I'll put a link in the description. Um, they are very helpful for killing mosquitoes. If the mosquitoes have already gotten in, I had the screening pressed in on one of my rain barrels and mosquitoes got into it and laid and next thing I knew there were all these little larvae in there, but I didn't want to dump all the water and start over again because it wasn't really a rainy time and I wanted to keep that water. So I put in some of this mosquito dunk stuff and it just knocked them out. And it's a natural bacteria way of killing them uh, that, is not toxic for your plants or anything else. So that works, but it's better to just keep them covered to begin with, if you can help it. Mistake number three, choke the flow. This was a problem with the first rain barrels I built. I put spigots on them that I got from the hardware store and they look like nice brass spigots. Well, after my first rain, when I cranked those things open, they only had a trickle of water. It took probably, it was probably like a gallon a minute. It was terrible. So you put a five gallon bucket underneath the spigot and you turn it on and you're just sitting there watching it fill up for the next five minutes. That was ridiculous. I should have just checked and gotten bigger ones. I'll never make that mistake again. A friend of mine has a great big PVC valve on the side of one of his above ground tanks and it just shoots the water out of there. That's what you want. If it's too much of a pain to get the water out, you're not gonna wanna use the rain barrel. If you're just sitting there watching the water trickle out of it, you are going to get bored and you're gonna go turn the hose on. So don't choke the flow. Another tip, don't go too small. I said I had rain barrels. Those were the first things I set up. Rain barrels with little choked off spigots. Well, 
I was just watching the rain pouring out of the gutter and I thought, I gotta catch some of this. So I made myself some rain barrels. I got some barrels that I reclaimed, got them for like 12 bucks a piece from a water treatment center. They said they didn't have anything toxic in them before. So I put spigots on them, I put screening over the top, I put them underneath the rain gutters and then captured water. Well, what I found was after about five minutes of heavy rain, they were overflowing from the tops, just exploding over and that means there were hundreds of gallons that I was not capturing. And you know what, a couple of 55 gallon drums, that's better than nothing, but that's not a lot of water. So, go big. Get yourself a big cistern, get yourself an old hot tub, build a pond, something like that. Don't just count on little tiny rain barrels. I mean, that's nice if you live in a condo or something like that, but bigger is better, especially if you're trying to survival garden. To get an idea of how much you can harvest off a roof, the University of Arizona reports a one inch rain will collect 600 gallons from a 1,000 square foot roof. Well, a 4,500 square foot lot will receive 2,800 gallons. That's a lot of water. 600 gallons from a 1,000 square foot roof. Catch it, use it, store it up for later because sometimes you don't know when it's gonna rain again. Don't miss the power of swales. Swales are indentations cut into the ground that catch water. These are swales on our homestead amidst the cocoa orchard. This slows down water going down a slope. The water comes down, it hits the swales which are running on contour, and it catches in there and then it soaks into the ground slowly rather than just running all the way down to the river or off into the road or wherever else and then evaporating, you're actually setting the water in place to go down deeper into the soil and actually soak in. By slowing it down, you're giving it time to get into the ground. And swales have been used by permaculture gardeners such as Jeff Lawton and Paul Wheaton to capture a huge amount of water and turn ground that is so-so into ground that is moist and rich. It also traps a little bit of organic matter coming down. All of the leaves and everything flow down with it. This isn't a way you capture it for drinking, but this is a way you capture it for your orchard or your gardens or whatever else you can plant around a swale. If you have a little bit of slope, use some swales and hang on to that rainwater. Rainwater harvesting mistake number six. Muck it up with algae. Algae are tiny plants. That means they photosynthesize. So there's a real easy way to keep algae out and it doesn't require algicide. All you have to do is cut off the light. You've got a rain barrel that's white and some is coming through, you know, some sunlight's coming through and it's turning it green inside. Paint it black, just paint it black. When they can't photosynthesize, they'll starve, your algae problem goes away. Now, if you have ponds and they've got algae in them, that's not that big a deal. You know, some fish will help deal with that. And if you are using that water to feed your gardens, Algae's great, it doesn't matter. It'll just rot into the ground, it'll act like compost when you pour it on. But for sending through filtration and trying to get clean water for your house, algae's kind of a pain in the neck. So it's better to just darken it out and keep it from being a problem to begin with. Mistake number seven. The very biggest mistake is don't harvest rainwater at all. If you don't harvest rainwater, you're missing an abundant resource coming from above and it's great water. Rainwater, Compared to chlorinated water, so much better for your garden. They've done studies on it showing the productivity increase that happens when they just use rainwater on a garden. It's good. This is the way God intended it. Water from the sky. Grab it while you have it, and you won't be worried if things get bad. You have a hurricane, you've got some water. There's a problem, a strike in the city or some terrible terrorist attack or something like that, you still got some water. You get yourself a Berkey water filter or make your own filter or whatever else. You've got drinking water, you've got irrigation water. The biggest mistake is just to not harvest it at all. So don't be afraid to be cheap. You can put a trash can underneath the gutter if you really want to start harvesting water right away. And then you've got a week's worth of water for your gardens. So. There are my seven top mistakes and how to avoid them. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Catch me on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com and be sure to check out theprepperproject.com where I've been writing articles for years. They're great folk and they've got some good ideas over there. Until next time, may your thumbs always be green.
If you wanted to harvest the rainwater Here are a few things that you might have forgot So let me break it down now with my top 7 Mistakes so all y'all can take it to 11 1. Don't make it crazy expensive dropping dollars In a hot tub, some barrels or a pond you'll find solace 2. Keep out the sucking beaks of the flying freaks Who lay their eggs on rafts in the tack Shoulders, knees, and toes, you gotta beat those bros Watch for mosquitoes 3. Listen bro, don't choke the flow Keep it wide open and you let it go 4. Go big or tiny won't cut it when the rain falls All y'all's gonna want it big So give a fig about size and just stay alive 5. Don't miss the power of swales Capture water running downhill Take the red pill and collect precipitation for evaporation Claims it from the thirst of trees, please Number 6 don't muck it up with algae Like a slick of green, that stuff is mean Plugging up your tanks with single cell banks of photosynthesized simple plants Don't dance to their tune Listen as I shout, just black them out and Number seven The biggest mistake you can make Is not to take Advantage of the God-given water You gotta catch it, so don't stress it Keep it simple and you'll reap The harvest of the sky Let's stay alive and thrive No matter what comes your way Okay, start today Yeah, yeah you better remember, cause I'm gonna remember that I told you to do this And if I come over to your house and I see that you have it I'm gonna steal your Christmas presents and throw them in the lake I'll make sure everyone breaks I'll, I'll, Maybe I'll, I'll paint some mean things on your sidewalk But make it plausibly deniable Yeah, peace Put a trash can under your gutter Word to your mother